Feeling like a failure in your 40s. Wow. If there was ever an alliteration that you don't want to have in your life, that's it. But, you know, for a lot of us, that's what we live with is this feeling of failure in one or many areas of our lives. And for some reason, the age of 40 stings a little bit worse than other ages. You know, I've had setbacks in my 20s and 30s. But when you get to the age of 40, you feel like you should have your life somehow together. You look at the people around you and most of them are settled. They have some sort of sense of success or achievement or accomplishment. And maybe you compare yourself unfavorably to those people. You think you should be doing better or you should have achieved something that they have or that you wanted for yourself and you haven't. Well, if that's the case, then hopefully this video will help you because I've been through this many times myself. I still struggle with this feeling of failure at the age of 43 that I am today. And I've got some lessons that I want to share with you that hopefully help you just as much as they've helped me. Now, I do want to say, you know, I'm not a psychologist or a therapist. I haven't spent years studying failure at middle age or anything like that. I'm just a person like you who feels the emotion of failure, feels like they're kind of not as far ahead as they want to be in some respects. And so I wanted to share that with you today that I'm feeling it. And if you're feeling it, hopefully some of these ideas will resonate for you. So the first idea that I want to share that has really helped me is that not every single part of your life is a failure. You know, there's a tendency, I think, especially as we get towards middle age, to feel like we're a failure because we don't have the right relationship or our career isn't as far ahead as other people. Or maybe we haven't traveled or we haven't had kids or whatever. There's something in our life that isn't at the same level that we would like it to be at or the people around us have achieved. And the risk here is that we kind of awfulize our whole life. We look at the entire life that we live and we think that everything is a failure. It's abysmal, it's hopeless. And in most cases, that's not true. The reality is that there's one part of your life that you're very frustrated about or you're feeling like you're a failure in. And that may be true. Maybe you are behind other people, but in other ways you're further ahead. And you have to keep that in mind that, you know, this sense of failure is something that you can't let take over your whole life. You have to keep it in perspective and look at the areas of your life that are succeeding. Now, I'm not trying to be one of those people who says, write a gratitude journal and, you know, be thankful for what you have. But there's something in that. There's something in this idea of, okay, one part of your life might feel like a failure, but look at the other parts of your life that aren't. For instance, Having hands, having legs, being able to breathe, being able to see or hear. Those are simple things that you have that actually a lot of people wish that they had. Maybe it's having a home. Maybe it's having friends, food to eat, you know, air to breathe, whatever. Those things aren't a failure in your life. They're actually a massive success. You know, I have half a head of hair. I'm sure there's people out there who wish they had as much hair as me. So it really depends on you as a person. You have to look at your life and realize that not everything in your life is a failure. Have you had setbacks? Yes, but not everything is a failure. There's parts of your life that are great and you can rely and be thankful for those things while you rebuild this other part of your life. Second thing I want to share is that failure often leads to wisdom, which leads to prudence. And I want to explain that a little bit. You know, when you have a failure in your life, one of the best things you can do is to learn from it. In fact, I've heard it said very well that if you learn a lesson from a failure, then it's not really a failure because you gain something. And that's a good insight to take away. Um, but I think what happens is with your failures, as you go through and you get these lessons, you start to garner more wisdom. And if you think about yourself at the age of 40 today, you are much more wise than you were at 30 or 20 or 15 or whatever age you started out at. And that's important. Your wisdom actually gives you an advantage over other people. Let's say you're restarting a career or you start a business like I did at the age of 40. You are much further ahead in terms of wisdom, in terms of the patience, in terms of being able to you know, follow through on what you want to do than you would be if you were 30 or 20. And so that stands for a lot of value in your life, the wisdom that you've gained. And what it also does is it gives you more prudence. Now, you might not understand what prudence is. Prudence is essentially the ability to work on the things that are most important to you. Know what's most valuable, know the areas of your life that will give you the most impact, and follow through on those areas. And I think that's what happens as you get a little bit older. Your emotions start to settle a little bit more. You don't have as many distractions or temptations. And therefore, you can take the wisdom and the prudence and actually use it to your advantage. So that's something that I've realized over the last couple of years is that, yes, I might not be ahead in certain areas of my life as far as other people, 
but I have wisdom and I have prudence. So starting at this age or restarting at this age actually helps me a great deal. And number three, which might be the most important thing that I share with you is that there is no scorecard in life. There is no one actually telling you that you're a failure directly. It's you or the voice inside your head saying to you, I'm not as far ahead as this person or this person has something I want. It's not fair. I want it for myself and I don't have it even though I'm 40 years old. There is no scorecard, my friend. There's no one telling you that you should be or not be something at a certain age. It's only us perceiving what we think other people think of us. And that's a really important distinction. You have to let go of this notion that you should be at a certain level in your life by a certain age. Now, I'm speaking to myself just as much as I'm sharing this with you. There is no scorecard in life. You are the person who dictates and decides who you want to be and how long it will take to get there. Sometimes it takes a lot longer than you expect. Sometimes it takes a different path than you expect. But eventually, if you persist at something in your own way, you will build the kind of success that you want for yourself. The final thing I want to share with you is something I ask myself very often. And that is, you know, at what age do I wish that I had started something? You know, if I look back at my life, say, starting my business, do I wish I started my business at 20 or 30? Absolutely. Well, then I ask myself, what would I do? How would I behave? How would I think? And how would I act if I was 20 years old or 30 years old starting this business as opposed to 40 years old? And interestingly, sometimes my energy is different. My attitude is different. And what I've learned to do is adopt the energy and the attitude that I would have had at 30 years old or 20 years old and putting that into my life today. Because sometimes we perceive that at 40, we're somehow disadvantaged to people who are 30 or 20 or 15 or whatever. But the truth is, we just have to adjust the way we think and we feel and act as if we were that same age and we can bring that same level of energy and focus to our own lives. And this has been a great little hack for me because whenever I feel like I'm falling behind in some way, I just basically think, okay, if I was 30 years old, how would I behave? How would I act? I'd feel great about my situation. And so therefore I can bring that same attitude back into the current moment at 40 years old. But on top of that, I have the wisdom and the prudence and the life experience to actually take advantage of using that attitude and energy in a better way. So my friend, if you've watched this far, I really hope that these ideas, I know they're simple, but I hope that they help you in some way just to reset and to recalibrate your thinking if you are feeling like a failure at 40 years old. As I said, failure at this age or feeling like a failure at this age has a little bit more hurt to it because we feel like we should be further ahead, but we should be at middle age, we should have everything figured out. The truth is nobody has anything figured out. So you have to decide for yourself whether you're going to be incredibly tough on yourself or you're going to be kind and give yourself support as you're moving forward in your own life. Hopefully this video has been valuable for you. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like or a comment below if you have something that you'd like to share about your experience of feeling like a failure at whatever age you're at right now. And if you like what I'm doing on this channel, please subscribe and stay part of our community. It would be great to have you with us. My name is Daniel Mitzenshort. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, thank you for improving yourself.